The most gorgeous beef wellington. Look at that. Beautiful. Winston? Winston? Come back with that leg of lamb. I think there was one dish that really blew me away as a young chef starting off in the Royal Kitchens at Buckingham Palace, and that was Beef Wellington. Now, Beef Wellington's not your typical weeknight dinner, a whole beef tenderloin, and neither was it for the Royal Family too. They would save this dish for state banquets for when they were entertaining, and for royal dinner parties. A state banquet was the time when the royal chefs could really showcase beautiful British food and while the French may have invented filet de boeuf, the British lay claim to beef wellington. Some say that the dish was invented way back in 1815 when the Duke of Wellington defeated Napoleon Bonaparte at the Battle of Waterloo. They named the dish after him, Beef Wellington, the Duke of Wellington. And others say that in the battle, he actually wore Wellington boots. Uh, wellies, as the Brits call them. Galoshes, I think they're called in the States here. Well, does it look like a Wellington boot? I guess it does a little bit. I'm not sure on that one. Nowadays, most chefs will actually just use the center part of the beef tenderloin because it cooks evenly and it looks pretty. But at the palace, when we prepared a beef wellington, we'd actually use the whole of the beef wellington, the whole of the beef. And so just tuck in that little piece underneath there. The queen loved her beef wellington, very well done. So the end piece here would be absolutely perfect because by the time this had cooked medium rare, then this piece was well done. And then at this far end, this was still rare. So something for everyone. I'm going to cook just the centerpiece today, just to make this look really pretty. So I'll take this piece here and cut, and then I'm going to go right down to this end and cut here too. This piece here, I'll actually take and save and use to make roast beef, a Chateaubriand. And this one we can roast and serve with Yorkshire pudding and gravy, a good old British tradition. The tail end piece there, that one I'll cut into little strips and use for beef stroganoff. So now we need to season the beef tenderloin and I use the Buckingham rub from my seasoning collection. You can use salt and pepper if you want. If you want to use the Buckingham rub, all these gorgeous seasonings in here. Uh, there's a link in the description. So season it nicely and then we're going to sear it. To sear the beef, you really need a smoking hot pan. And I love the cast iron skillets for this. Oil in there. And then carefully put in the beef. I want to get a really nice sear on the beef, but I don't want to cook it all the way through. Because once it goes in the oven with the pastry on, we don't want it to be cooked in the center, you know, well done all the way through. So just a nice sear. Once we've seared the beef all around, then I'm going to take it out and put it onto a plate and into the refrigerator and just let that cool down and just relax a little bit while I work on the next pieces. The next component that we need is the mushroom duck sal, mushroom puree. And I actually like to make mine the day before, and so it just sets up nice, nice and firm like this. It's also one less job to do if you're making a beef wellington at home. Here's how we make it. Into a large skillet, add about two tablespoons of olive oil and two tablespoons of butter. Once the butter has melted, add the diced onion, garlic, 
and a little salt. Stir and cook until the onions are soft and translucent and then add the mushroom puree. Reduce the heat and stir until combined and simmer until most of the liquids have evaporated. We're also going to need some English pancakes, crepes, and again, these can be made the day before, like this. Place the flour into a large bowl and add the egg, followed by the salt and the milk. Whisk together until there are no lumps. Heat a crepe pan or skillet until smoking hot and add the vegetable oil. Pour in about two tablespoons of the batter and spread around the pan. Once the crepes is cooked on one side, carefully turn it over so it cooks on the other side too. Remove the crepe to a plate to cool and repeat the process until you have three crepes. And once you've got all the components together, then we can start rolling out the pastry. Now, there's a million videos on Beef Wellington on YouTube and uh, probably a million more ways of making it. I'm making it the traditional Buckingham Palace way. And instead of, you know, the, the new way of adding in prosciutto, prosciutto comes from Italy, right? Why would we put that in a Beef Wellington? But we do need something to help keep those juices around the beef. And so for that, we use the crepes. So roll out the pastry. And we want to try and keep a nice rectangle, a nice dusting of flour. Okay, and then obviously it's got to be wide enough so that it'll cover the beef. So check with the rolling pin to there to there, a little bit to fold over, perfect. Now, some people will actually brush Dijon mustard over the beef right now, but in my Buckingham seasoning, I actually have English mustard powder, so I don't do that one. Instead, I'm going to take my crepes and just lay them here onto the beef. Onto the beef, I mean onto the pastry. Just slightly overlap. There. And I don't need to wrap around completely. So, next I can put my mushroom duck cell. And I'll just spread this evenly over the mix. Just spread it out nice and evenly, but we want to leave pastry all the way around the sides. Then we can put the beef in the center. Next, I'm going to take my egg, and I'm using the whole egg for this, and I'm going to brush all the way around the edges. Then I'm going to fold the pastry up and over the top and then cut a little pastry off here. This is going to be excess pastry that we don't need. And then the same off this end. And then the same with this one. And this is going to lift up and just connect over the pastry there. And then we'll just do the same again and cut off this excess pastry. These end pieces just tuck in slightly, and then it's like gift wrapping a present, isn't it? And then fold those over, and then the same this end. Tuck them in slightly, and then just fold over the top. Now we can press around it, massage it a little bit, make it look beautiful, and it goes onto the baking sheet. But before we do that, we just turn it over. And so, those creases are all tucked away underneath. Brush off any excess flour, and then carefully lift it up onto the baking sheet. It looks good already, doesn't it? <laughs> Next, I switch to just egg yolk, because using the egg yolk just makes this beautiful golden color over the beef once it's cooked. So I'm going to just brush this all over the top and the sides 
of the Beef Wellington. It was actually Julia Child that made this dish really famous in America uh, on her TV show, The French Chef. And I think, you know, all through the 70s, it really was the, the gourmet dinner party entree that everyone was doing. And then with the back of the fork, I'm just going to make some marks on it, just to make it really pretty when it comes out of the oven. You can buy these new gadgets now that you cut out a trellis and lay over the top. But the thing is, once it's actually sliced onto a tray, you don't see that anyway. It's all about what's inside. So, into the oven, 350 degrees, and it'll be in there for about 40 minutes, or until the pastry is nice and golden brown, and hopefully the beef is medium rare on top. If it comes out and we cut into it, and it's all well done and overcooked, that's the sign of a bad chef. But the Queen loved her beef Wellington well done. So I can get away with this one. No, I can't. <laughs> Once the beef comes out, it's smelling gorgeous, it's looking beautiful, and we've actually got to let it rest for about 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, uh, just to let everything just relax uh, before we cut into it. This was always a nerve-wracking time when we were doing a state banquet at the palace because we weren't sure if upstairs the queen would be sitting down for lunch or for dinner and we, 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 we didn't want this to sit for too long because it would really overcook. Mind you, she liked it well done so I don't suppose she would have mattered anyway, would it? <laughs> Once the beef's relaxed, then we can cut into it. The most gorgeous beef wellington. Look at that. Beautiful. A gorgeous beef tenderloin. Center cut beef. A little mushroom duck cell around the top and sides. Covered with a crepe. And then beautiful puff pastry around the edges. I mean, it's not, as I said, your everyday meal. Beef tenderloin is so expensive. But you can use pork tenderloin in this dish as well if you want to. And that's going to make it cheaper. But for special occasions, this is just the most gorgeous dish when you cut into it. And there's no polite or easy way to eat this. But you've got to get a little bit of the beef and the mushrooms and the pastry. It's so good. And we'll save the end piece for the queen because this piece here will be perfectly well done just for the queen. Beef Wellington, just the ultimate dish. Looks beautiful and perfect for a royal state banquet. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Give me a thumbs up. Tell me how you make your Beef Wellington in the comments below. I'll see you again soon.